Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your newest episode of the DCU Update for 2021. Notice that I have now officially removed the A from this program just because of the fact that when it comes to DC animation, we definitely go vastly beyond the Bruce Timm DC Animated Universe that was first started with Batman the Animated Series, which is almost approaching another monster anniversary year, but that's not why we're here today. We are here to talk about a movie that is truly going to warm the soul. Why? Well, I have to apologize about the fact that I am not wearing anything comic book related on my show today because it is freaking freezing in here, Mr. Bigglesworth, but we are not going to be talking about Disney Pixar's film soul. We are, in fact, going to be talking about the newest addition to the DC original film library, which is still growing at a rapid pace, and it is Batman Soul of the Dragon. So, with the new direction that these films are going in, after we officially finished the DC original film universe storyline with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, we started off a brand new generation of films with Superman, Man of Tomorrow, which was definitely a new take on Superman's origin story. But today, we're going to be going and taking a look at a different origin sort of story when it comes to Batman. Now, this is actually dubbed an Elseworlds title to the production company over at Warner Brothers. And of course, I'm glad to see that Bruce Timm is on board with this specific project. So this movie, when I first heard that it was coming, I didn't really know what to think about it because we were going back to when Batman was officially starting to become a noticed and feared entity in the world of crime and evil in Gotham. And it takes takes place in the 1970s. So, Batman is still very young, it's definitely a funky time, and I was just saying to myself, why are we going in this direction? What does this have anything to do with anything that is awesome about Batman? But I always go into these films with an open mind, because when you take a look at what these people who put these films together truly appreciate about these different stories and interesting projects, you have to give a little bit of a positive feeling towards them. And I have to say, after seeing a couple of reviews, I had a feeling that I might in fact fall into this category with them because the reviews were turning out to be positive. And I will say that Batman Soul of the Dragon is far from the best film in this library, but I will definitely say it is the most fun that I have actually had watching a DC animated film in a very long time. And I definitely have to say, after Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, we need something a little bit more on the lighthearted side. Granted, it is a rated R film, there definitely is a lot of gore and violence and some cursing, but it was definitely a fresh take on Batman. Batman going back to a different time period. And what I loved so much about Batman Soul of the Dragon was it took three things that I love about popular culture and weaved them together. Batman, Bruce Lee slash Kung Fu movie cults of classics of the 70s, and James Bond spy movies. This was everything that makes me have a fun time watching a movie all wrapped up in a nice little package. And I also got to see some characters that I do know about but never really got to see much in the pages of recent comics or also even in the animated films and TV shows. I got to see a story that revolves around Bronze Tiger, who I did get to see in Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, and I really loved the take on that character, but I loved this version. He definitely had a Shaft complex, and it was fantastic. Lady Shiva, another character that I know, a villain slash anti-hero in Batman's rogues gallery, but I loved this version of her, and also a character that I had never heard of, Richard Dragon, who is actually voiced by Mark Descastis, and you may know him as the man who plays the chairman's nephew on Iron Chef America. He voiced Richard Dragon, and he was definitely the perfect voice. Also, I was very curious to see how the new voice of Batman would actually be in this film, and that was David Giantoli, and I have to say, I 
really appreciated his voice work. Just like I have accepted Jason O'Mara in the world of Batman when it comes to animated voices, this man I would like to see if he is tacked on to some additional Batman films. I think he would do a great job. Also, the rest of the voice cast is fantastic. We've got two of the greatest voice actresses in Kelly Hugh and Jamie Chung who have lent their voices to many DC animated films and projects of the past. Loved Kelly Hugh as Lady Shiva. She was definitely one of the highlights of this movie, as well as Michael Jai White, who played Bronze Tiger. Loved him in this movie. And of course, the great James Hong, who voices O-Sensei, who is the mentor of Bruce and all of his compatriots at Nanda Parbat, which of course is a place that we know in Batman lore. That is where Bruce Wayne, before he became Batman, went to get his training in regards to martial arts. So he used that all to his tactics when it comes to becoming Batman. And it was a very interesting take on this specific chapter of Batman's past because I didn't see much about it. Yes, there have been so many ways that I have seen parts of this specific point in Bruce Wayne's past when he actually was training. We saw it in a couple of episodes of Batman the Animated Series. We even saw it in Batman Begins, but I've always wanted to see more of Batman in Nanda Parbat. Another thing that I really appreciated about this movie was we got a villain that we had actually seen more so in Batman Beyond, even though they are in the pages of comic books, and that's the Cobra Cult. I liked the fact that we got to see another incarnation of them, and it was definitely cool because they definitely fit into the time frame and time period very well, especially when it comes to some of those truly cliche James Bond sidekicks. We got that so much in this film. And also a bunch of additional great voices that we had seen in DC, like Gray Griffin and Robin Atkin Downs. Just a great package. But also the music is fantastic. You want to talk about a soundtrack that fits a movie so well when it comes to portraying the 70s, Batman and Soul of the Dragon does it. But there is still a bit of a negative, and unfortunately, it's the reason why this movie is not one of the best in the library, even though it is extremely fun, and that's the third act of the film. It just goes way too supernatural, way too weird and crazy, and it just felt like I was watching two different films when we got to the third act of the film. However, I will say that one of the boldest things in this movie is definitely the ending, because we get one of those endings in this film that I think is truly missing in all of film and television and even in books, and that is the movie just ends and you may not get a sequel, you have to figure out how this story is going to end. I'm not going to give away what exactly happens before the credits roll, but I will definitely say that when you get to that point and the credits do start to roll, you're going to say, oh, okay, I had no idea we were going to stop here. This is definitely interesting. And then you're going to wonder, do I want to see more or are we just going to let this dog lie? I don't know, but all I can say is that... It's going to be a very interesting 2021, knowing the next film that is on the way, which is one that I am just so excited for, along with the next film after that, which is going to close out 2021. But Batman Soul of the Dragon, if you're looking for just a fun ride, this is definitely one of the DC animated films that is going to rev that to you. I just had a fun time watching this, even with its imperfections, and I am just so glad that I gave it a chance, but then again... Was I even not going to give it a chance? Come on, you know me, guys. So that's it, everybody. Those are my thoughts on Batman Soul of the Dragon. I would love to hear your thoughts, so please put your comments in the box below. And I'm looking forward to the rest of this year when we talk about some new things over here at the DCU Update, as well as the newest couple of episodes for the DC Animated Film Live Show. But until then, I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.